Vikings you love with TCL. Get in the know. Non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. You like that? You like that? Hey, you held him to 20 points, man. You gave us a chance at the end. But I got three words for you. You like that? Who likes that? That's right. You know what we like? We like we like being wrong. And that's All what we time. celebrate here on Write That Down Wednesdays. We're going to get into our Write That Down predictions, an accountability session. We are the only show in America. Well, this and our other show, Mackie and Judd, where we actually keep track of our predictions. Batting averages on the other show, completion percentages on this show. And so we'll get into the predictions. We'll get into uh, the accountability session. But, boys... I think it's time for us to cheers a little Corona hard seltzer. The Vikings value durability, right? The Vikings, oh, yeah. and that's one of the things about Kirk Cousins. Like, the dude never misses a game. He's just always healthy. Jimmy Garoppolo can't stay healthy. There's all these other guys that can't stay So, So what better move yesterday than for the Vikings to bring back a man who had more offensive snaps <laughs> under his belt, his very large belt, a man who played a 1,083 offensive snaps, more than any player on the Vikings roster yesterday. We're going to celebrate the return of a bastion of durability, Dakota Dozier. Boom. Declan, let's do wow. it. Wow. Yeah, the Pure Beach Vibes, man. I, I've been trying out the new Pure Beach Vibes of Corona Hard Stuff, the second variety pack. I even did a live taste test for the first time on the Passion Fruit yesterday on our Instagram page. Follow us at Score North to break down this exact signing because I needed a new flavor. I needed a new flavor because I'm I'm okay with introducing new flavors on the offensive line. You know, uh, maybe the Vikings, they want to bring back Dakota Dozier. That's fine, but I needed a new flavor. So I went with that passion fruit flavor. And there's also pineapple, strawberry, raspberry. These pure beach vibes just keep coming. There's more players to rotate into the meat and potatoes of the Vikings offensive line. Corona Hard Seltzer is the only hard seltzer made with pure beach vibes. It's a tasty spike sparkling water with a splash of natural fruit flavor that allows you to enjoy the moment. In each can, Corona Hard Seltzer has zero carbs, zero sugar, 90 calories, and is gluten-free. Relax responsibly. Corona Hard Seltzer spiked sparkling water with natural flavors imported by Crown Imports, Chicago, Illinois. Dex, I, I feel like you probably weren't completely forthcoming there in this sense. And this is where, come on, Corona Hard Seltzer without a doubt helps out. Dakota Dozier, the transaction comes across, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. You ran to your fridge. Oh, yes. You got your Corona Hard Seltzer collection out, but not to cheers it, to drown the sorrow yes. of what you just saw. <laughs> oh, but, I mean, God. this is where, see, here, here's what's so great, a versatile drink. Corona Hard Seltzer is there for in times of celebration. It's like a good parent. It's there in times of celebration, and it's there in times of despair. So and yesterday guys, was despair. Do you guys think, I, I saw this question come across our social media timelines a few different times. Do you guys think the Vikings are trying to sabotage Kirk Cousins for not agreeing <laughs> to a contract <laughs> restructure? Like, I like uh, Do you think there's a conspiracy theory here? I Listen, told Kirk, you. You don't oh want to restructure? Guess who is coming back? <laughs> I told you a week or two ago, it seems like it, but there's no way. And every move that they're making now... Gets us closer to, I guess there could be a way. I mean, hey, Kirk. Hey, Kirk. Will you restructure? No, I'm good. Okay, cool. Thanks a lot. But here's the here's the Dakota. Part that, you want to come back? So here's the part that I find confounding. Okay, I just want. And first, I want to I want to give you the tail of the tape here, just for anyone who, for anyone who's thinking, because there was a couple articles written yesterday where it's like I saw at one point. Dakota Dozier was referenced as having some ups and downs with the Vikings last year. What I, season were you watching? Like someone, no. someone tweeted that to us. Somebody wrote that and said he's durable. <laughs> well, he did play more snaps than anyone else on offense last year. So uh, he, he was 82nd out of 86 guards who played at least 20 percent of team snaps in PFF grade. He allowed 46 pressures in the passing game, most among all guards. Nobody else allowed 40. And he took nine penalties, which was the second most among all guards. So, uh, and by the way, he was he was 70th out of 86 in PFF grade in run blocking. So, got that going for him. He wasn't wasn't quite in the bottom 10 there. Um, here's where here's where I'm a little, if not a lot, concerned for the Vikings because I've seen some of the reaction like Mason Cole. They traded a six round pick for, and I'm fine with that move. But Mason Cole has been a very meh to below average 
interior offensive lineman for the Cardinals the last few years. He's Dakota a backup Dozier. depth guy. Absolutely. Dakota Dozier has been terrible, right? Uh, they have a couple other guys who are on the roster that, like, is Drew Samia still on the roster, or is yeah. he a free agent? So he's Drew Samia is still on the roster technically, I think. I think uh, he is, on yeah. a rookie contract. We'll look that up. At some point, especially when you're you know, guaranteeing money, at some point, you can't just pass all these guys off as, oh, that's a depth guy. Oh, that's a depth guy. That's a depth guy. Like, well, you, you know, you only get a certain amount of guys on your roster. And so what I'm wondering is how many, like, with Dakota Dozier and Mason Cole, are they saying, well, Austin Blythe went and signed with the Chiefs, and we couldn't afford the Joe Tooney level of fix at left guard, and so you know what, we're just going to have to make it work with one of these guys. Either Dakota Dozier's going to take a step forward or Mason Cole's going to slide in and yep. uh, and be better than he was with the Cardinals. Do you think that's what they're doing right now? Or do you think there's another move on the way to fix the left guard position? And so I think that they've got an offer out still that is just pending on the table to force Lamp, but they're clearly trying to lowball all of these guys. The Austin Blythes, who have found employment elsewhere. With the Chiefs, um, Lamp is clearly not signing, and he probably wants a little bit more. Uh, here's what I'm tired of, and here's there's a few things here that really, really confuse me. Number one, I'm tired of, of I, I occasionally see th- this tweet, the Vikings have X amount of cap room left, so they have room to make more moves. Okay. The problem is, look at the available guards left. And they are, so I don't care how much cap room I have left. At some point in time, if the bottom of the barrel is all that is remaining out there, it's not going to help me. So, like, quit telling me. It's not like it's not like you can say, you know what, we got some cap room now. Joe Thune, I know you signed with Kansas City, but how about coming here now? He's gone. So there's th- this whole notion that, well, they've got some room left. Okay, what are they going to do? The, I told you this before, and I will continue to say this. I think they're going to find a way to fill the left tackle spot, which won't be a colossal disaster. I'm not positive of that, but I think. But the left guard, which was a disaster last year, is not being filled. And I have no confidence in the ability of this current administration to fill the left guard position, which is still the quarterback's blind side, sufficiently. Which gets me to my final point, Dakota Dozier. And I say this with him being, I say this completely, all due respect, him being a football player, okay? I'm, he might be a great guy. So what I'm about to say is extremely mean, but it has nothing to do with him as a person. So Dakota, or if if your parents are watching this, or your family, <laughs> I am not, this in no way reflects you. But, you know, the most important thing in life at the end of the day is to know what your weaknesses are and remove them. If I eat too much, I get sweets out of my house. If I have a drug problem, I stay away from my friends who deal drugs, okay? (laughs) Dakota Dozier, I thought Mason Cole was the deodorant to, okay, we got a guy here, okay? We got a guy here. Dakota Dozier is bringing back temptation, which is to say, how about we allow him to compete for the job? He knows what we do schematically, right? That, but that's and, the scary part. He knows what you fill, do schematically, and he was terrible. Yes, but that's why you. Rem- but that's why you remove him from the equation. That's why you don't bring him back because now the temptation. How are we supposed to get to any conclusion? But there is a fighting chance that Mason Cole and Dakota Dozier will be competing for the left guard position. And that means Dakota Dozier could win it. And don't dismiss what I'm saying by saying, oh, they'll do something else, because they haven't shown that yet. Dude, I mean, how would you feel right now if you're Kirk Cousins? Dick. And again, I get that. I think I think they're going to find a left tackle. But like, <laughs> when that news comes down yesterday, are you not sitting thinking to yourself, are you guys bleeping serious right now? Yeah. Come on. Vikings, I I, I want to make this work. Like we sit here and we, you know, I think justifiably so. We sit here and we poke holes in the most important player. But like, I feel bad for that dude right now. I feel bad for him looking up and down free agency and anyhow. Um, Dakota Dozier, he's but back what? in all his glory. No, go ahead. But, why, go, but no, but why? But why is he back? Why? Why is he back? Why are you tempting yourself to play him? He can't play. Like, what are you doing? You are, and and so this gets to my grand point too. Can somebody please tell me what they are doing philosophically? Because, like, I keep seeing. Look at these moves. They're all in. They improved their defense a lot. They're all in for 2021. 
Can you seriously look at that offensive line and tell me they're all in? Like, what are you doing? Somebody tell me. It's almost like I feel that I should I should drive to TCO Performance Center and demand the blueprint of what they're doing so I can tell them they're crazy. Like, you can't be all in on defense and just be like, but the offensive line, ah. It's or, they be- have, or, or they have plenty of cap room left. Okay, you know what? During the pandemic, the toilet paper was all gone. I could have shown up at Walmart with $1,000. I couldn't have got toilet paper. <laughs> so I don't care how much cap room I have or how much cash in my wallet I have. It's insignificant. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Do you guys do you guys think Mike Zimmer like what? So he speaks today and, and, and our episode tomorrow will be centered largely around whatever Mike Zimmer says today to the to the media and the fans. Do you think he's looking at what's happened this offseason and he's like, this is the best possible outcome that they have spent every dime of outside free agency money on defense? And and he's he's bas- like right now he's basically saying yeah I mean if you want to use a draft pick or something at some point I, I guess you could you could draft an offensive lineman but for the most part figure it out I think he's in the like you guys need to just sort of figure it out offensively mode because defense is the thing that I'm going to be focused on what do you think he's going to say today Oh I think we're going to get I think he's going to be happy Yeah I think he's going to say that that we don't know what we're talking about he's going to go back to the exact talking points that he tried to use a year ago when discussing the cornerbacks and the question was asked are you going to add stability there are you going to bring in at that time uh what, what now amounts to a Patrick Peterson type and he's like oh well we got this you, you don't get it we got this I think he's going to say we're absolutely fine and I think he's going to be giddy and, and, Phil, I'm telling you right now, prepare for this. Prepare for them to draft a defensive player in the first round. I'm just telling you that. All right? Oh, I've already me- – I mean, I'm mentally there. Like, I know that's what they're going to do. Okay. I, I know that's what they're going to do. I have my thoughts on what I would do. But, like, like if Justin Fields falls to 14, I'm taking a quarterback. Like, that's what I would do. I know. People are going to call me crazy for that. But, like, what they're going to do is an edge rusher. Like, Quiddy Pay will probably be the pick. And you know what? Quiddy Pay might be awesome. So, I'm – I. I'm not necessarily auto ripping them if they draft a defensive player in the first round, like a lot of people will. I'm I'm more like I think you've you're in the rage mode right now, which I love. I'm in full acceptance mode. Like the, the, to me, the ship has sailed on them trying to go for one of the best offenses in the NFL. Like they've they they have they have decided being a fringe top ten offense is plenty as long as we can build the defense back up to where it is. And um, everything that they've done, all of their actions have have screamed that to this point. And to your point, <laughs> Dakota Dozier being signed back doesn't guarantee he's going to start, but it guarantees he's in the mix, and it guarantees he has a shot if he performs well in the mini camp and the off season workouts yes. and training camp, et cetera. Like he's now in the mix because I don't think there's a left guard. Put it this way. There are no more elite guards to be signed in free agency. Only or only guys that will compete for a job, right? Mm-hmm. Like Forrest Lamp, would, Forrest Lamp would come in here to compete for a job, not to be yep. an automatic starter. And I don't think you're using your first round pick on a guard. I think there's too many edge rushers. There's no. going to be tackles out there. Like so, the you know the earliest you would draft a guard right now is the third round. So like literally the only guards you would add to your roster right now are guys that would compete for the job, which means by definition Dakota Dozier is competing for the starting left guard job again in 2021, which is <laughs> hilarious to me at this point. I'm just like sort of is here it? for it, like whatever. Is it really hilarious? Is it really hilarious? They've they, they've this is the path that they've chosen, and I am just I'm just gonna watch it and see what happens at this I, point. So. I just don't what understand. I don't get how they can how they can on one side of the ball so be so clearly all in and then at left guard and like you have no left tackle now too. That's the thing is the left side I will continue to say this until it's not true. I don't care if Dozier's back. I don't care if Mason Storm is on this team now. I don't care. I'll take you to the blood bank, Senator. The key is the left side of the offensive line is vacant. Dex, what's your what's your rage index right now? Zero to a hundred. Probably like that's a big big range, but I would say probably like a seventy, probably like a seventy. Okay. Because I just I don't understand to judge point like you're just neglecting this. I'm so, like a twenty man. I'm just here. You're also <laughs> made this point on on the Instagram page yesterday. You're pigeonholing yourself 
to take the best tackle available, which might not be the best player available, which is pretty much kind of, they, they reached for Garrett Bradbury two years ago, right? They're putting themselves in that position. And look, I think Elijah Vera Tucker should be a good tackle. If Panay Sewell ends up falling to 14, great. Yeah. But you're, you're pigeonholing yourself because you've already also added most of the other things on defense that you're now going to have to reach. And I don't know if that's going to be the best option when there's wide receivers that are heavy in this class, that if, if, uh, if Justin Fields or Kyle Pitts falls, I would rather take that and just say, screw it, we're going all in on offense and targets. Here, here's what happened yesterday. I guarantee you, all right? Rick picks up the phone and says, "Hey Kirk, just want to just want to just to clarify. I know that we've had this discussion a few times this offseason. Is it a no on restructuring? Is it a no? It's a, it's a hard no because we we'd like to free up some money. Got a couple. I mean, it would have been nice two weeks ago to have that money because we could have had Joe Tooney in here. But just want to clarify: Is it a no on restructuring? And Kirk and his agent are like, "It's a no, dog. It's a no, it's a for, no me, for me, dog. dog. We're gonna play this contract out and uh, we're gonna we're gonna hit free agency again after 2022." And Rick said. Sounds good. Thank you. Click. Picks up another phone. Hello, Dakota Dozier's agent. Yes, we'd like to officially fax over the paperwork to you for a 2021 contract. Thank and, you. Appreciate doing business with you. That's right. And to Dex's point, I do not believe now that they are going to take a tackle in the first round. And I think your opening day offensive line right now, if I had to bet, is going to be Brian O'Neill at left tackle, Dozier or Mason Storm at left guard, Bradbury at center, Ezra Cleveland at right guard, and an unknown right tackle Rashad who's going to be a yeah a journeyman type of guy. That's my guess. I I really yeah that's my guess. Brian O'Neill is going to be your left tackle. Like and and there's a fighting chance that Dozier is going to be your left guard. I mean, come on. It's no, not I'm even serious. like it's I'm, I'm I mean, it's like just beyond the point of being mad. It's like it's sort of laughable if that happens. But I don't know, man. We got to get some predictions on the books here. Write that down. Predictions powered today in large part by our friends at Wham Attack. Listen, if you've got a broken down guard tackle <laughs> phone, I've got a Dakota Dozier laptop. to bring in to Wham Attack. <laughs> uh, they will. What they will do is they so they source their own pre-owned devices. They're based in Minnesota. And they pass the savings on to you. They'll even buy your old device for cash. You can buy, sell, trade in, whatever you need. Whamatech. Whamatech.com. That's W-A-M-A-T-E-K.com. Also, our friends at Federated, they're providing risk management resources. Federated Mutual Insurance Company. They recently launched My Shield. The Vikings could use my shield to protect their starting quarterback. I don't know if that's how it works at Federated. I don't know if they protect quarterbacks or just businesses. But Can you play left tackle? Uh, Can my shield play left guard? Can you play both? (laughs) My shield across the entire left side of the offensive (laughs) line. Uh, So uh, my shield provides risk management resources for your business. Think about the things that could be dangerous, whether it's company vehicles or company ladders, et cetera. My shield is here to help you with peace of mind. So federatedinsurance.com where you can click on the my shield link or just download the app. And remember at federated, it's our business to protect yours. Most make predictions and then never admit they're wrong. Yeah, that's not Mackie and Judd. This is the place where we just totally own our horrible predictions. Write this down. And eat them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Write that down. It's Write That Down. Write it down. You like writing things down. With Mackie and Judd. All right, boys. This is it. Every single week we make predictions. They are mostly wrong. We celebrate the incorrectness and we hold each other accountable Usually we welcome in a guest listener predictor as well. I don't know. We must have had a scheduling thing. I'm, I'm blaming Declan, quite frankly. That's fine. Um, audio issues, scheduling issues. Mm-hmm. No, I'm just kidding. So Landon, uh, if, if Landon joins us in the next 10 minutes, he can get his predictions in. Otherwise, we can get him on some other time. So here's how it works. Three Vikings or football-related predictions from everybody each week. They must be quantifiable. We keep track of completion percentage and touchdowns. And if you want to be part of it, send a DM either on Twitter or Instagram to at Phil Mackey or at Dex's tweets, or uh, what's your, it's you're the, the underscore Dexter, right? On that Instagram? is correct, on, 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 the, on the gram. Yep. Awesome. So you can find both of us there. Are we ready for the accountability session here, gentlemen? Yeah, we are. Start, start with Judd Zolgad, oh, wow. who had nothing come off the board. Nice. I'll Awfully take that. Awfully conservative approach. Judd's just handing the ball off here and write that down, just like the Vikings in the first half of every game last year. 
Brad Johnson. I said, <laughs> Brad Johnson. I'm Brad Johnson, circa 2001. I told you guys last week the Vikings will sign Forrest Lamp between uh, then and now, and clearly that has not happened. Whoops. They got Mr. Durability back. You should have said Dakota Dozier you'd be... That might be a touchdown because I never would have thought that was happening. You know what's funny? Like it never entered my consciousness. Never entered my nor, consciousness nor, that they. Nor were did it back. mine. Nor did it mine. <laughs> I've been saying for a month now to replace Dakota Dozier, meaning he's not coming back. Uh, listeners here, AJ said. Hey. And a, this is our producer, AJ, our backup producer. Talks with Anthony Harris will fall through, and the Vikings will sign a different safety during free agency. Thanks, and that gentleman is the first completion of the season for hey. the listeners. AJ carrying. Let's give him a round of a AJ. Again, just pushing me out the door. Just, just he, he's well, he's yeah. right there. He's knocking. Yeah, he Pretty comes good. knocking. Technical uh, issues might be better. Thought about giving this a touchdown, but I mean, I think it was it was likely that the Vikings were going to move on from Harris and sign a different safety. So it's just a good. It's like a twenty-five yard explosive yeah. play. It's an explosive. That's a third play. down completion. I like it. Yep. And then Spencer said Deshaun Watson to the Bears, and they'll get a first round pick from Chicago out of it. Well, the Bears have Andy Dalton now, so they don't need Deshaun. And Deshaun Watson. Watson's got. Loads of problems have nothing to do with football. Yeah, two more lawsuits yesterday for, for that guy. All Ooh. right, Declan, you said that the Vikings mm. will have reported interest in free agent lineman Donovan Sue. And I did a, a combing through Google before he signed yeah. back. Actually, has he officially signed back with Tampa? I think so. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's official. He, he, but yes, he's he's back to Tampa. Yeah. So um, I couldn't find anything that linked the Vikings to him. So sorry, Dex. That's right. good. And that brings us to the 2021 season stats. Judd Zolgad with the highest completion percent. Check down Judley here. 46% no touchdowns. Uh, I think Mackie Air Coriel here, 32% with three touchdowns. J- Declan, 29% completions, no touchdowns. And listeners on the board, 9%. A very, I would say a very Blaine Gabbert-like 9% completions with no yeah. touchdowns on the season. Well, Dwayne Haskins for you right there. Yeah, wow. Yeah, Dwayne Write Evans. it down. You like writing things down. Yep. So, all right, boys, we're going to go just around the horn here. Judd, Declan, back to Phil here. And, yeah, if, I mean, if Landon jumps in, he jumps in. If not, then I guess the, the, the listeners will have to jump back at the mix next week. Or maybe we can take some special submissions or something in the YouTube comment section to get three predictions at least on the record for this week so listeners can, can put some stuff on. I don't want to punish all the listeners um, just because we had a, a mishap here, but. We'll figure it out. Yeah, send us some predictions in the comment section of YouTube, Purple Daily YouTube, and maybe we'll uh, we'll throw them in the mix officially. Judd Zolgad. All right, off our uh, previous conversation, I will go on the record and say this. Dakota Dozier will not be the Vikings starting left guard for the 2021 opener. I mean, my God, please don't make that happen. Dakota Dozier will not be... It might be Mason Cole. I, I, I don't know. It might be Forrest Lamp. It might be me. But it's not going to be Dakota Dozier. I don't know, man. I got it. I mean, I don't, I, know, man. I don't believe what I just, I don't believe that I'm probably right here. But are you really going to do that? Are you really going to trot that poor guy out again as anything think, more than a backup? I think there's like a 20% Mike. chance, 20% chance he's the yeah. Oh, yeah. No, player. you're right. You're think, right. Uh, we'll see. All right, Declan. I have Dakota Dozier one too, but I'm going to save it. And I think this one, I think these next two predictions are home runs. One of them being the Dozier one, one of them being this one. Nice. Mike Zimmer will use the exact words, hell of a player, when discussing the acquisition of one of the recent Vikings defensive free agent ads t- today. Okay. Hell of a player when okay. discussing one of the free agent it's ads. It's a home run. It's a home or run because I'm being extremely specific. It's a touchdown. Hell of a player yep. will be so used I, when... I th- and I think we get the transcripts player. from the PR department, right? So we can kind of comb yeah. through the transcripts. Do we still get? Do they still transcribe? I believe they do. Okay, I'll I'll be watching it. So if I hear those words, I will stop Zim and say, "Congratulations, you just helped our guy Declan." <laughs> I'm like sure, that. he'll love to hear that. that oh, I'm sure he loves to hear from yeah. Zolgad. Yeah. All right, boys. So Mike Zimmer has put together a vaunted run-stopping defense for 2021. He now the Vikings have two nose tackles and one reliable offensive lineman right now. Which, well, what people said, what do you mean, Ezra? Cle- Ezra Cleveland was fine at right guard. So 1.5, 1.5 reliable offensive lineman, two nose tackles, and because they have two nose tackles, the Vikings defense. Write this down. 
will allow fewer than four yards per carry this upcoming season. Yeah. So they will allow fewer than four yards per carry for the whole season defensively. Mm -hmm. Write this down. It's probably okay. very Opti optimistic about the run defense. Well, they better be good. Yeah. Write this down. I mean, uh, the investment there. Sources told me a, a, maybe a former nose tackle was in town eating at a local restaurant down the street from me yesterday. So you never know. Even a third guy could be brought in. Just saying. Throwing that out there. I feel like throwing he's too there. old. Can we throw his name out or or is that? Yeah, screw it. Yeah, I, I, Linval's I, 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 not coming back. Linval, Linval, Linval Joseph, Joseph was eating at a local establishment down the road for me. Yeah, he ain't coming yesterday. back. I think how he excited, still resides here. How excited would you be as a local restaurant that's been grinding through the pandemic oh just to God. stay open, and then Linval Joseph, like an NFL interior defensive lineman, walks in and saves your year revenue wise? <laughs> big dogs gotta eat, dude. Big, big dogs. Oh, big gotta tipper eat. or not? Huh? That's the question. I'm gonna guess he probably is. Okay. Yes, Write it down. You like writing things down. All right, back to Judd. All right, so there, there is there is constant subterfuge as the NFL draft approaches, and teams that don't need to lie leak things out and lie, uh, and I don't get why, but I just know it's a fact. The steam right now seems to be that in making the trade for the third overall pick that San Francisco is going to take Mac Jones. Like, they're really getting it out there. Mac Jones is our type of – so write this down. The 49ers will take Trey Lance I love it. with a third pick in the yeah. 2021 draft. Yep. I don't know why the, the whole Mac Jones thing is being talked about. A and look, his value probably has increased just because he plays quarterback. I am not buying that the San Francisco 49ers got up to the third pick to take Mac Jones, so I'm going Trey Lance. Yep, also worth noting here, too. If you're Kyle Shanahan and you look around your own division and you see Kyler Murray and Russell Wilson and then you look across over to the AFC and you see you know Pat Mahomes daggering you in the second half of that Super Bowl like mobile quarterbacks he's he's had mobile quarterbacks on his mind for 2 years now yes. and so it would make a yeah, lot more right. sense that it's going to be Trey Lance to me. Yep. Write it down. You like writing things down? All right, Dex. All right, I think my uh, my second touchdown post here. Dakota Dozier will post a better PFF grade in 2021 than he did in 2020, and he'll have to play at least 50 snaps. I'm going to go that's with like 50 a, how snaps. How is that a home run? Because he, he was horrible last year. Yeah, yeah, but that's why he should be better. It's just natural. I You don't know that. He was and awful last year. And 50 year. snaps is not a lot of snaps. Well, I mean, like up to like 100 or 200? I, I feel like well, you can do whatever you want, but it's not it's not a touchdown. If he, you're, you're basically saying the worst player in football last year will be sort of better in 50 snaps. He's so, pretty awful. Yeah, no, we agree. Yeah, but he should be. But he should go up. Like, like I, if you picked a PFF grade that was actually pretty good, that would be a touchdown. Well, Do we know like, what his grade was last year? Phil's yeah. Good. So if you said Phil's obsessed with it. <laughs> so his his overall grade was forty four point six. His pass blocking grade was thirty six point seven. So if you said his PFF grade goes over sixty this season, that's a that's right. a touchdown. All right, I'll put over sixty. I'll yes. post a PFF grade of over sixty. So at least fifty of at least, snaps of at least sixty. At least in at least fifty snaps, so basically, like he plays a game at least and does pretty yeah. well, at bare minimum. Yep. Okay, all right, we'll give you that one. We'll okay, that one. what's going on? Write what's it down. Right? You like writing things down? All right, write this down. So Mel Kiper, I think, is a little bit shook, and like he started doing trades, and now there's been all these trades, and like so his trades were wrong. Although he did have Miami trading out, <laughs> he just had him trading out with Carolina, and he had the Vikings <laughs> trading. So here's what I'm gonna say. Write this down. Whenever Mel Kuyper's next mock draft comes out, he will still have the Vikings trading in the first round. So I think he's still going to stick to some of his guns here. Uh, he's been rocked a little bit. I think he still has the Vikings trading in the first round whenever that new mock comes out. I think we're due here in the next few days. I feel like yeah, it's, soon. Been a, it's been a minute soon. since Mel put out a draft. Not Todd. Todd, 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 Todd was next. I thought Todd, 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 Todd was next. Todd will come out next, and then Mel after. <laughs> Write this down. I feel like Mel got got dragged into trades and hates it, and now they're all wrong. And and so my guess is he hates it more. Yeah, you're probably right. All right, my last write that down on the football edition this week. Daniel Hunter will have eight or more sacks in 2021. Daniel Hunter will have eight or more sacks in 2021. 21. The key is I'm not saying for whom. All right, king of the check down here. So you're you're, you're leaving it open to all. He's teams coming off a and neck. Yes, he's coming off a neck giving, injury. And you're giving him like half the sacks that he usually has. So yes, he's coming Charlie off here. a he's coming off a neck problem. <laughs> I'm taking a huge gamble here. 
It's such a huge gamble. I don't even know he's going to play all 16 games. I'm giving him eight sacks, and the, and I'm also – it's not a sho- – so, someone just said shovel pass. Look, it's coming up <laughs> a neck problem, okay? Damn it. That's Respect amazing. the process. <laughs> all right. Um, Declan, your final prediction. Yeah. Write this down. I think I, I think also this one also this is also a home run because I'm being specific. Rashad Bateman. <laughs> You're giving yourself touched on that. Touch, I don't care. Rashad Bateman <laughs> will be drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, that's for sure a touchdown. Oh, yeah. yeah. Rashad yeah. Bateman will okay. be drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs. That's way better wow. than your Dakota Dozier prediction. Because okay, I, so I think he's right in that mock area. It'll be awesome to watch him ball with Pat Mahomes. I'm going Rashad Bateman will be drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs. All right. be a great spot for him. On um, on I was watching Get Up this morning with Greeny and like Ryan Clark and those guys and and Greeny did a whole thing on is this the best receiver draft class of all time even better than last year and they showed you know the two Alabama dudes and Jamar Chase etc and then he said and, and those three guys and then but like what about all these other guys he start, and he and they literally had like film packages for like five other wide receivers and they didn't show Rashad Bateman so just getting <laughs> snubbed on ESPN's Get Up this morning God. write this down too bad all right final prediction here write this down. So if you missed it yesterday on Mackie and Judd, our friend Randy in Cottage Grove, at RandyVikes69 on Twitter, he came on and he, and he was going to give us his Randy 1.0 mock. Randy has correctly nailed the Vikings' first-round pick in two of the last three years. And then he stopped before 14 and said, oh, I can't give this away. This is a revolutionary idea at 14. And I'm gonna, I gotta go, I got to take it to Rick Spielman before I take it to you guys. So here's what I'm saying. I still have faith in Randy. I'm already on the record on that show saying that he will nail the Vikings' first-round pick again. And on this show, I want to say, write that down. Randy, in his seven-round mock, will nail at least one Vikings pick after the first round. So okay. he needle in a haystack. He'll be right on a on a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh-round pick by the Vikings in his seven-round mock. When do we get his mock now? Well, I don't Since know. Now, now, I don't know what his deal is now. But like, Since he stopped yesterday. Usually it's like the week leading up to the draft, like that Monday okay. or Tuesday. All right. So, All right. So about a month month from now. Okay. As, but the problem is <laughs> we don't know this. Is, is he now convinced that he's so good that he's going to try and keep it proprietary? Like that's the pro- like he literally stopped yesterday. Hey, if he can get money, if it, listen, if he wants to create like a Patreon for his mocks, that's what we should we should actually do that for him and take a cut cuz he probably doesn't know how to set that up. He tried to bring a sponsor on the show last year and you cut what, him off what, do, and then he got mad and hung up on us. If we set up a Randy and Cottage Grove Patreon and it was like mock drafts and like his dating life and stuff, I'd get some hits. Would someone pay money for that? Traction. And could we sp- could we like create a business and take 50% of Randy's I think if it's mock, I think if it starts with with his exemplary mock drafting, yes, I think someone would pay for it. Let's definitely a couple uh, people might pay for it. Let's have a business discussion off the off the microphones here and see if we can come up with something. (laughs) All right, boys, good stuff today. Good predictions. We'll see what comes out of it. Judge checkdowns. Declan trying well to take touchdowns on each prediction. <laughs> Declan's like he had Dakota three. He's Do- like, this is a touchdown. This is a touchdown. De- Declan's like Dakota Dozier will still be breathing in week yeah. two. He'll have two legs <laughs> when he touches the field in 2021. All right, All right that's a wrap on today's episode of Purple Daily. Daily Vikings Entertainment on Apple, Spotify, the Score North app, and also on YouTube. We'll see you guys tomorrow to uh, recap what Mike Zimmer says at his press conference today. Good talk.